the Bible says in, uh, Isaiah, in Psalm 5, 11 and 12, that uh, when you trust in him, what's going to happen? He's going to give you favor. Amen. The favor of the Lord will be on your life. You'll be compassed about with favor, the Bible says, with both, from both God and man. So it pays to trust in him. All right. So living northbound in a southbound world. All right. And uh, over there in Matthew chapter, or, uh, yeah, Matthew chapter 7, we see it says here, Matthew 7, to, in verse 13, Enter ye at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. But straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. So what's he telling us here? Well, there's a straight and narrow way, and that's going to produce life. And only a few people are going to find that, few by comparison, all right? The, gate, the other gate is wide. You know those guys that are floating downstream in their boats? <laughs> that gate is wide, and it's going to produce destruction, and it says many that go that way. So there aren't that many of us that are rowing upstream by comparison now. But we've got to have some guts. We've got to have some courage. Amen? Don't be a wimp. Amen. Say, no, bless God, I'm going to trust the Lord with all of my heart. So today's culture, right now we're looking at, you know, women's rights, women's re reproductive rights, as they call it, versus the rights of the innocent and the unborn that don't have a voice. The separation of church and state versus religious freedom and expression. Well, it's really the... Uh, that's really not in the Constitution, the separation of church and state anyhow, really. Gay rights, LGBT agenda versus protect our children from locker room and shower room intrusions from those who call themselves transgender. Cater to the MS-13 gangs who terrorize uh, the, the, uh, the cities of America versus repent or else get shipped back to your country of origin. <laughs> Amen. How about boycotting Israel, BDS movement, versus supporting Israel, which God urges us to do in Genesis 12, 3 and Psalm 22, 6? How about socialism versus free market and free enterprise as our economic system? That's in Matthew 25 about the, the talents. We've talked about that before. So you see, there are many things that you're facing. You're rowing upstream when you go to the voting polls, aren't you? No school church versus supporting school church. Uh, school choice for those who want to have Christian education for their kids. Sure. Unpatriotic, ungodly portrayal of our founders of America versus the patriotic view of our history, which is what we really need to teach. Globalization. In other words, those who want a one-world government. There are people that want a one-world government. Believe it or not, that's what a lot of the establishment has been shooting for, the swamp. <laughs> A one world government which sets up the, the foundation for the coming Antichrist. And so we don't want that. We want someone who's going to promote global sovereignty. I mean, not global, but national sovereignty. National sovereignty. Right. Hallelujah. How about the judges who want to rewrite the Constitution and make the laws uh, ver uh, versus the other type of judges who are originalists or constitutionalist judges? who said that we are to interpret the laws and refuse to legislate from the bench. That's the one I'm going to go for, right? How about you? So we believers have a different lifestyle than the world, and we see through a, a different lens. And theirs is cloudy, but ours is clear, praise God. And the benefits of walking the narrow way, rowing upstream, are eternal life and not hell. It's acce having access to healing and provision and, and, and not just man's wisdom, limited to man's wisdom, praise God. We have restoration and wholeness and deliverance is ours because Jesus said in Luke 14, basically he is saying, I am your jubilee. Amen. I am the one that's come to set the captives free, glory to God, Amen. to heal the brokenhearted. Amen. And set at liberty those who are bruised. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Say it with me. Jesus is our jubilee. Amen. Hallelujah. So all of the above, these are not at the disposal of the unbeliever, of those who reject Jesus. This power is available to believers, not the unbeliever. Jesus said, I am your jubilee, and I have redeemed you. 
and I am worth living for. Life is worth living for Jesus because I am your jubilee. And here's how to obtain it. In Galatians 3.29, he says, If you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. How many are Abraham's seed here today? Glory to God, if you're born again, you're Abraham's seed. That means you are an heir to all of these promises. So you're redeemed from shame and guilt and emotional instability, redeemed from fears and condemnation, inadequacy and anxiety, all because of the blood of Jesus, praise God. And so these people got to lift the blinders. Got to get the blinders lifted off their eyes. The blinders of 2 Corinthians 4.4 4, and get their eyes enlightened like it says in Ephesians 1, 18 and 19. His plan and His provision is worth, worth it all. And it's worth not floating downstream with the world because their consequences are disastrous. Amen? It says, love, the, love not the world, neither the things of the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. We're not to love the things of this world. Amen? We're to make up our mind to not get out of our boat for anyone, right? <laughs> Amen? To keep on rowing upstream, Amen. knowing what He's accomplished for us and knowing the negative consequences of floating downstream. Amen. 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 So He'll persuade us to keep on rowing upstream. Our inheritance is worth it all. And you can live the dream. You can miss hell and eternity and torment. And so I want to encourage you today. Just keep on row, rowing upstream. Maintain the favor of God. Amen. Don't give up. Amen. You are, you're going to win in the end. Don't get out of the boat. Don't get in another kind of boat. Amen. The benefits of the narrow way are many. Eternal life, restoration, all these things. I remember one time, and I'll close with this story. I remember one time I was uh, flying from Staunton, Virginia. It was at night over the, over the mountains and had filed an instrument flight plan and, and uh, had a passenger with me. And, and anyhow, I got this headwind. This terrible headwind was holding me back. It seemed like I was just creeping along at about 40 mile an hour or something. <laughs> and uh, so I wasn't getting to my destination. So I, I was in contact with air traffic control, and I told them, hey, you know what? I'm, I've got this awful headwind. Is it okay with you if I just land somewhere and get some fuel, refuel? And, and they said, sure. And they did a un very unusual thing. I landed and refueled and then took back off, and they re this is something they don't normally do, but they reinstated my flight plan and let me pick it up where I left off and came on home. But you see, once in a while we need, because we come against headwinds in life, don't we, once in a while? Things that want to bog us down, things that, that, that want to hold us back. But, we, but listen, take a, take a moment to get refueled, <laughs> but then get back up in there and begin to row and go against the tide and don't let things hold you back, Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Well, Matt, come on up here. He's got a few things to say about uh, motivating us to keep on rowing, keep on living northbound in a southbound world. Amen. Get your, have your paddle? Sure. <laughs> so has anybody ever paddled upstream before? It's a lot of resistance. Got to use a lot more energy. And that's, that's the case in our culture today where we actually have to go against the grain. It takes mm -hmm. a lot more effort. Yeah. It's easy to fit in. You ever hear that, see that illustration where someone's on a chair and it's much easier to pull the person down than to, to pull them up? And our culture is, you know, post Christian. So they're not only ignorant of Christian things, but they're actually against Christian things. So I just want to encourage you today what's going to cause us to want to stand up and paddle that narrow way? It's really experiencing God's goodness. Amen. I picked some of these songs today, and, and Luke did too, just to remind us of how good God is. You know, there's, there's nothing bad about God. He's never done anything wrong and said, oops, I didn't mean to do that. There's nothing that he should have done that he didn't do. Say it with me. God is all good. He's all good. Some, you know, back in the day, the church used to think that God sometimes was bad. That you didn't know whether if you're sick to go to the doctors, maybe I'm supposed to be sick. Or should I go to the doctors and get better? And that was just, I don't know, wrong teaching? I'm, I'm not sure. But if I'm sick, I'm going to pray and 
go to the doctors because when you're well, you're much, I can serve the Lord much better than when I'm sick. Yeah, so I want to say today that God is a good, good father. He's a good heavenly father, and he's for you. So I was doing some studying on this and just really meditating on, you know, the fact that we do see some judgments of God in the Old Testament, and we someday will stand before God in judgment for the deeds that we do. But guess what? That is only, as Christians, to give us crowns and to reward us. It's not to punish us and send us to a hell's flame. That's right. Come on. So just like a policeman, a policeman is to protect the good citizens, Amen. right? Yeah. But sometimes there's a bad citizen and he has to raise his taser or his pistol and say, stop, yeah. quit that. And what is that doing? He's doing that to protect the good citizens. And that's exactly how God is. God loves each and every person, but sometimes he allows that policeman to point at that person. Maybe it's a form of judgment. I don't know. But in the Old Testament, we saw it time and time again with the plagues. You know, Moses was almost killed because there was an edict to kill all the firstborn. I know this is pretty deep. You guys with me okay? Yeah. That they wiped out all the firstborn. Pharaoh, was it Pharaoh? Yeah. They wiped out all the four firstborn um, Israel, Israelites. And so one of, the, one of the plagues to let my people go, remember? Yeah. God said, it's time, let my people go. That's right. So there's these plagues, these bad things that were happening to these bad people. That's right. Because they were holding and treating bad and holding these people in slavery and making them make bricks with no hay. It was, just, it was horrible. Right. So to get rid of the bad... There was plagues. Let my people go. Yeah. And the 10th plague was a result of what the Egyptians sowed. They sowed murder to firstborn, so they reaped murder in the 10th plague to the firstborn. So this is not actually God saying, I hate you people. You, you are disgusting. No, this is a good God freeing the good people. He loves us. So don't be confused today. Don't ever think that God is against you or God's teaching you something. Right. It is worth serving Jesus. Amen. So I just want to pump up your faith today. Whenever I worship the Lord, I'm not thinking about, is he out to get me? If I mess up just a little bit, is, am I going to be in trouble? Am I going to, am I going to lose my job? Am I going to, am I going to, my, is my car going to break down if I just mess up? A little? That is not the God we serve. If you have that little bit of thinking in your head about that, then I encourage you to get rid of it Amen. because it's wrong. Amen. God is always good and he's always for you, especially when you're submitted and he's Lord of your life. He actually is looking for ways to bless you. He's actually searching. The Bible says he's looking for those who will. How's that verse go? He's, he's, diligently seek him. So the, the, for me, it's easy. I'm going to serve the Lord to my last breath. If everyone else finds out that the Bible's false, guess what? I've experienced him enough to know they're probably all wrong. And I'm going to still serve the Lord. So not only knowing God's goodness, but experiencing his goodness will help you to get this paddle and say, Lord, give me the strength. Be the strength of my life. Whom shall I fear? I will fear no evil because thou art with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. It kind of looks like a staff a little bit, huh? Well, speaking of staffs, we serve a good shepherd. He's a good shepherd. He never takes that staff and, and says, man, you did it again. He, he never uses the, the staff as a, a weapon. He uses it to protect. Oh, don't go that way, little guy. There's a hole down there. Come over this way. And he is a good shepherd. You know, sheep are not very smart. They'll keep eating the same grass until they're eating dirt. So a shepherd says, no, 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 come over here. There's more grass over here. And he, lead us, he leads us beside still waters. He restores our soul and, and keeps growing us and growing us to places of maturity. Don't be afraid whenever he said, no, no, come over here with me. 
I got something more for you. I got something better for you. That grass is depleted. Now it's time you get into the scriptures more or get, read this book or read this chapter. And when you're hungry for him, the Bible says you will be filled. That's right. Romans 2, 4, this is my first verse. In 10 minutes. So Romans 2, 4 says, Or the riches of his goodness and forbearance and longsuffering dost thou despise? Not knowing that the goodness of God doth lead thee to reformation. So this, you probably heard it like this. The goodness of the Lord leads us to repentance. It's not, I read this list of rules and do's and don'ts and, man, I just want to do them all. Yes. No, that's not the Bible we serve. Even though doing the Ten Commandments is a great thing, if it's motivated by a desire to honor and love the Lord. Not out of a desire to be better than everyone else or be afraid of hell. Those are maybe good things, but that should not be our desire. Our desire should be out of love for the Lord. I want. I want to do what's right. I want to stand up for what is right. My yard signs have gotten stolen twice. The one that says pro-life, vote pro-life. My yard signs have gotten stolen. And you know, there's, a, there's a friction in life. So now I take them in every night until Tuesday. And I'll just let someone take them. <laughs> but I, I am for what's right. No matter if someone throws a, a rock through my window or eggs my car, I am for and I'm going to stand for what's right. You know, back in February, I, I uh, had this guitar right here. And I came in one day to the church. And this guitar right here was missing. It was gone. Can we mute this? And I was, I was pretty sad. Because this, is, this, is, this was my, like, 40-year-old favorite. Waited till I was 40 to get a guitar like this. It's handmade. And it's beautiful. It's worth a lot of money. It's not something you buy for your kid for Christmas. He's 10. <laughs> and it was missing. And when, things bad, when bad things happen to good people, it can be confusing. Wow, Lord, I'm serving you. What am I going to play on Wednesday? And I went to my wife, and she said, well, let's pray. This is a spiritual battle. Let's pray. My wife's an intercessor. And she said, we just pray that those, those people, we don't know who they are, that stole that guitar, will not be able to get rid of it. It'll, it'll just sit there. And that it, they will just be touched by the Lord. And they'll, and they'll even bring it back. Yeah. Within the next service, after the Wednesday that I played a different guitar that didn't work out so well, Luke. <laughs> it was Luke's first guitar. It doesn't stay in tune or whatever. But I did it. I did it cheerfully. Actually, I just, just pretended because it didn't sound good, so I just pretended. <laughs> but after that following Friday, the, the police chief called and says, I have a miracle for you. I mean, this is a miracle of God, he said. We found all your stuff, and we made some arrests. And he said, this doesn't happen. And usually we keep stuff locked up in evidence, but we're going to give it to you so you can use it for your Sunday service. And by that Sunday, I, mi I missed one service, but that Sunday I had my guitar back. And the great thing about God is being so good. Yes, you have to fight sometimes. Yes, you have to battle the enemy sometimes. Sometimes there is a fight. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God. The greatest thing about the story is, between that time that I didn't have my guitar, the insurance company said, hey, we'll, we'll cover your guitar. Go get another one for your service. So I actually bought a new guitar in the meantime. So God's so good that now I have two handmade, expensive guitars. Let's give the Lord a hand clap for that. Yes, so I called them back, and I said, hey, we found our guitar. What should we do? And they said, hey, we're going to cover half of it. And, whenever, and, and so basically it's because of the deductible being paid back and everything, it'll be free. It was a free guitar, handmade guitar. That me and, me and Luke now get to worship the Lord with handmade guitars, and God is good. So there is a battle sometimes. There is a fight. But guess what? If you don't give up, you will win in the end. 
And I thank God for my wife who spoke words of faith over that situation and put hope. I mean, we're, we had these cameras all through the church that week that we were trying to figure out who took the stuff. And if it would beep, if someone, there was activity, it would beep, it would wake us up in the middle of the night. No, it was just a bug or the fan kicked on or something. But that was a fight. We were fighting. And by the grace of God, through the help of the police, the good people, we, we won. So in closing, I want to say it again. God is a good shepherd who loves to take care of his sheep. And you say, well, why, why doesn't he just make it all easy for us? We're doing the right thing. We live in a world that is not free of evil. Adam and Eve, you know the story. Adam and Eve did something they weren't supposed to do. God leased the earth to them. He said, take care of it. They did wrong. They brought this earth into a position where the prince of the power of the air, Satan, was sort of in charge. Until Jesus came on the scene, Satan was in charge. That's why we have Noah. That's why we have Nineveh. That's why we have all these places where there was judgment taking place because it was an evil world. It was an evil place. But I want to say today, because of Jesus, our good shepherd, we, we're going to win. Let me close with this verse right here. Acts 10.38 says, And you know, just ignore them, they're just moving a canoe. <laughs> Acts 10.38 says, And you know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Listen to this. Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. If you, if you ever doubted God's heart, look at what Jesus did when he was here. He didn't say, oh, you get, you get some uh, leprosy because you didn't show up to church last week. No, he went about doing good and healing all those that were oppressed of the devil. He's against working with the devil. He doesn't work with the devil. He is working on your team. He's on your side. And he is for you, so who could be against you? Amen. There is a fight. There is a fight. But we don't fight with our hands. We fight on our knees. We pray. We say, God, change these people's hearts. Lord, do a work in our nation. I encourage you to do some fasting in the next couple days because prayer changes things. There's a shift in the air. I don't know if you can sense it, but there's a shift in the air. And God wants to show himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are right towards him. Everybody doing okay? Say, I'm hungry. So he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. So this reveals the true character of God. God is not the author of evil. So you say, well, God created everything, right? God, God created everything. That's true. If you look at Genesis, one day, two day, three day, he created all these things. But where in those seven days do you see where he said, I created sickness? You won't find it. Well, then you say, well, how did these bugs get on this planet? I think anything that's defiled turns bad. And sin defiles. Even us. When we defile ourselves, we turn bad. And we can be a virus to people. So God made nothing bad. Well, you say, did he make the devil? He made, the, he made Lucifer, but he made Lucifer pure. And it was, it was a magnificent musical instrument, a creature, a creation of God. But pride defiled him. And you say, darn it. <laughs> but the cool thing about this whole life thing experience we have is we fight to the death, physical death, and then we receive a crown of life. That's right. yeah. And this whole... So, so to speak, test when we win, yeah. I think it really pays dividends for eternity. Right. 
I don't know, I don't have scripture and verse for this, but I believe that we are going to rule and reign based on how we overcome in this world. Because we don't, we don't have victories on this earth, just that's it. Every victory on this earth, I believe, has some merit to the next. You agree with that, Fred? There are some verses to it, but it's not specific. You receive a crown of life for the deeds, the good deeds done in your body. Let me close with this. Pastor was talking about receiving from the Lord. It really is dependent on what you believe. If you believe that sometimes he answers prayer, then you're going to pray a prayer that's going to say, God, if you're up to it. But if you believe that God always answers prayer that are in, in his will with the scriptures, yeah. then you will not pray, God, if you're up to it. If you have, if you have time some, at some point, you're going to believe it, yeah. and then you're going to stand on it even if you don't get it. You know why? Because it's true. Right. And you die believing is much better than dying unbelieving. Yeah. Right. I commend anyone who dies with sickness but died believing. Because that is God's will. Well, then you say, why did it happen? Because there's an evil world out there. I don't know why. I just know it's not God's will. Yeah. But here again, the prince of the power of the air, he's in charge right now, but not with God's people who are free. But even God's people have to exercise his defeat. As a Christian, I can go up for prayer for my knee or something. And I actually can experience something fly out of my body. Could it be a spirit of infirmity on a Christian? It's possible. Don't understand it all. Still figuring it out. My wife and I are still figuring it out. But I know that I am given the tools and the weapons to defeat every, every attack. So let's believe right so we can receive right. Are you with me? Let's close with this verse. So this is me trying to be led here. But Mark 21, 22 says, If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. Philippians 1, 6, And I am certain that God who began the good work within, within you will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Jesus Christ returns. He is working in you. My desire should be your desire. I want to die of old age, and I don't want any crazy radical cell or any cr crazy radical disease taking me before I'm supposed to die. Amen. That's right. And so I'm going to fight with God to be his representative on this earth and fall asleep someday. And go to heaven. Amen. That's right. That is my desire. That should be your desire. And I don't want to. It's not my desire to. Not be able to function. So when you believe right. You can receive right. right. Say it with me. I want to believe right. So I can receive right. The way you think that God thinks of you. Is the way that you will respond to him. If you think he's mad at you, if you think he's sort of bothered by you, or you're, a, you're a, an issue to him, a nuisance, then it's going to be very hard for you to say, God, I love you. Why would you do that? Why would you love someone who you think is a nuisance, that thinks you're a nuisance? No, you have to think that God is totally enamored by you. He loves those specific things that only you can do. And he loves to see you live out the talents he's given you. He loves to see you at work, fulfilling, even to in your 80s, your destiny. He loves to see you offer the two loaves, the five loaves and the two fishes that you have. And not, and not put them in your bag and just walk through life and say, I'm afraid to get rid of it. He loves to see your faith in action. He loves you. Psalms 105, for the Lord is good and his love endures forever. Say it with me. The Lord is good. Lord is good. That's in the scripture. Yes, it is. That must be true. Amen. 
and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues throughout all generations. You will receive from God when you, you, from your heart, believe in God. When you really believe that you are the most important thing to God, you will position your heart to receive from God. That verse I mentioned before is 2 Chronicles 16, 9. The eyes of the Lord search the whole earth in order to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. Psalms 145, 8, the Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, and rich, rich in love. I hope I can encourage you today that he is always on your side. He's for you. He's not against you. Let's stand today. If anything bad happens, is it God? I can't hear you. Is any, if anything bad happens, is it God? No. What's it time to do? Say fight. fight. It's time to fight. Yeah. It's not time to lay down and say, oh, I guess I'll just play a stinky guitar for a while. <laughs> no, it's time to fight. Amen. Yeah. Glory to God. Whenever you have a pain in your body, don't say, oops, I guess I won't be able to run anymore. I guess I'll just, Amen. I guess I'll just live with this limp. Amen. Believe God Amen. to restore you. Yeah. And don't quit fighting. Don't quit fighting, Jim. Don't quit fighting. Keep fighting. This guy's a good carpenter. Good carpenter. If you need a carpenter, see Jim. Thank you, Lord, for touching this back right now. Thank you for doing a creative miracle. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Swelling go. Discs be reformed. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. So what do we do? We just keep believing. Keep thanking. Believing that he's good. I'm going to pray for all of you. Just uh, put your hand on your heart, if you would. God, right now, we want our heart to be wide open to you. We don't want to be afraid of you. We don't want to be concerned that we might do wrong and lose your favor. Lord, right now, let your goodness overwhelm us. Let your goodness, as we walk with you, be the joy of our soul. You complete us, Lord. You make all things new, and you never give up on us. You never give up on us. Your hands are always outstretched, saying, I love you with an everlasting love. I've drawn you with my loving kindness, and I'm for you. I'm for you. I am for you. I love you. I have eyes of love. I've heard people go to heaven and say, I look at his eyes, and they're fire full of love. Eyes of fire full of love. Can you even imagine, can you even imagine how he knows how many hairs are on your head? Every day when you wake up and one falls out, he cares that much about you. Let him touch your heart right now. We receive, God. Help us to believe. Help us to believe and fight and row upstream against the grain and laugh at the devil. Laugh at the devil. Laugh at the devil. Laugh at the devil. Ha ha. Ha ha ha. Yeah, we're not going to get stressed about elections, Lord, because you're still on the throne. We're still on the throne, Lord. Bible says rejoice, and again I say rejoice. So that's what we're going to do. We're not going to cry. We're not going to cry. God's on the throne. Four years ago, I saw these people crying like it was the worst day of their life after the elections. And I'm like, what? We're not going to cry. God's on the throne. And he's touching people's hearts. And there's, and there's a last day revival coming. And I encourage you to stick around. It's going to be pretty fun. Go ahead, Luke.
I searched the world It couldn't fill me no. Man's empty praise And treasures of fade Are never enough Come on, let's praise him today Thank you, Lord Tell him you love him today You came along Put me back together Is not satisfied here in your life. Listen, those of you out there that are watching on Facebook today, I want you to know that Jesus loves you and he has an awesome plan for your life. I'd like us all to just pray this prayer right now and mean it, okay? You can be saved right in your living room, your kitchen, your bedroom, wherever it is right now that you're watching. Let's pray this prayer together. Everybody say, Heavenly Father, thank you for the blood of Jesus. I know he is God. And I invite him now to be Lord of my life. Thank you for forgiving me of all my past sins. Thank you for accepting me, for loving me, and for a first-class plan in Jesus' name. Come on, let's rejoice. If you've prayed that prayer, you're a child of God today. Whether you're here or at home, wherever you are, come on, let's rejoice today. Hallelujah.
turn craves into cottage turn them bones you part the sea you turn seas into highways you're the only Thank you, Father. We'll keep on rowing upstream, keep on living northbound in a southbound world. Have a great day. Jesus loves you a whole bunch. If you still need prayer for something, come on up here right now. Kind of spread out, though, as you do.